Hi, today we're going to be discussing comparing and contrasting in terms of reading and writing. Your Achieve 3000 article for this week compares and contrasts two forms of written communication, handwritten letters and emails. For this example, we're gonna be comparing and contrasting moths and butterflies. We're keeping it simple. For this type of writing, there's three key aspects that you should be aware of and try to keep in mind as you're either reading or composing a piece of writing. The first is organization. You wanna make sure that you follow a logical sequential order when you're sharing information. You don't wanna jump back and forth or present information in a random order because it can either confuse the reader or the reader may just lose interest. Second is you want to incorporate transition words to help your writing flow smoothly from one idea to another. Words like however, nonetheless, therefore, and although are some beginner transition words that you might wanna to try to incorporate into your writing. Third is you wanna make sure that you're including supporting details. After your main idea, you need to back up your writing. So you should be using colorful and descriptive language like adjectives and adverbs to create a visual for the reader. Now, when we're talking about comparing and contrasting, we need to make sure that we know what those words actually mean. Very often people misuse them. Comparing means that you're showing how things are alike, similar, or the same. And we have some key words that help us to do that. Correspondingly, both, as well as, also, in the same way, and many others. When we're talking about contrasting two different topics, that's when we're talking about how those things are different. There are more keywords for contrasting and showing differences than there are for comparing and showing similarities. Some contrasting keywords include alternately, conversely, differ, notwithstanding, on the other hand, and however, among many more. If you're composing a piece of writing where you have to compare and contrast two topics, I suggest that you Google a list of compare and contrast keywords and then try to incorporate words from that list into your writing. When a person is planning a compare and contrast piece of writing, a very common tool they use to help plan is a Venn diagram. Here you see two overlapping circles. One topic is on the left, another topic is on the right, and in the center where the circles overlap is where you would list similarities. This planning tool is not the best that you could use because after that you're left with the decision of how you wanna incorporate that into your paragraph structure. I have a better chart for you. In this diagram, you're more set up to have a sequential and logical flow when you start to compose your writing. So on the left, you would have your first topic. On the right, you would have your second topic. In the center is where you would list similarities and how the two are alike. Then you have a bottom row where you're gonna contrast and you're gonna list the differences. In the center, you'll just list how they're different and then on each side, you'll give the detail to say exactly what is the difference. Let me show you an example. Remember, we're comparing and contrasting moths and butterflies. So on the left, I have my topic moth. On the right, I have butterfly. In the center, I've listed three ways they're the same. Both are insects, both have two sets of wings, and both belong to the Lepidoptera order. Below that, I've listed five topics of differences. Color, body size, antennae, wings, and when they're seen. If I look to the left, I can see that for color, I've listed dull colored wings. That goes with moth. On the right, I can see that I've listed bright colored wings. That goes with butterfly. And I've done the same for my four other topics of difference. So you can see. How exactly are they different? This is going to set you up a little bit better for when you start to write your sentences because you won't have to think of the details. They'll already be in your planning. Here's an example piece of writing 
about moths and butterflies and comparing and contrasting the two. You'll see that in the first paragraph, the main idea is introduced. In the second paragraph, there is a comparison where it talks about how the two are similar. In fact, you can even see the word similar is used there. In the third paragraph, we have a difference. Fourth paragraph discusses a difference. Fifth paragraph discusses a difference. And then finally, the sixth paragraph is a conclusion or summary paragraph. You might also have noticed, if you're looking at this piece of writing, that there are some details that actually force you to visualize what the author is describing. If I go back up to the third paragraph, it says the antennae of a butterfly look like candy canes without the stripes. That sentence forces you to picture a candy cane in your head and then compare that to the shape of the antennae on a butterfly. There are some other examples of visual language in the article. Now, the one that we just looked at had six paragraphs, but traditionally you will be asked to write a five paragraph essay. I suggest that your first paragraph have an opening sentence that's an attention grabber or a question. Then it should continue to elaborate and explain your main idea. Your second paragraph should be comparison where it talks about what's the same between your two topics. In Achieve 3000, you might notice that they're talking about how email and letter writing are the same. Following that, you should have two paragraphs that talk about the differences between your topics. You should think about what types of differences exist and then group them accordingly. So if I were to go back to my chart, you'll see that there's five types of differences, but I could group them into two different groups. Color, body size, antennae, and wings could all go with the appearance of moths and butterflies. And then my last one, scene, could be behavioral. So I could talk about when moths are seen, when butterflies are seen, and what they're seen doing during the night or the day. That could be a separate paragraph from just the physical appearance. That brings me to my fifth paragraph, which is a conclusion or a summary. You want to end your writing by making sure you emphasize the important points of what you've been trying to get across and making sure that the reader is left with the main idea of what you are trying to convey. Compare and contrast writing is very important and it can help people to make decisions about topics. So you want to be sure that you are organized, your transitions make sense, and that you are using visual vocabulary to help the reader imagine and think about what you're talking about. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great day.